And today I wanted to go through an example of building a deck because a lot of people ask for that and we could always use more examples. My idea is simple. Now that we've had this rules update right here, we have removed the ability to put a card into a server and force the runner to access it. This disables ganked infinite loops, and this also disables some Atea shenanigans you can get up to, such as installing a snare into the server that they now have to access. Probably a good change for the game, but now that it's in place, I am now interested in doing Atea access install kind of stuff. I, d I don't time these things well. I, I just have to go try the strategy after it's been made worse. Now, I'm not interested in forcing them to access something because that's off. What I am interested in is using Tukana in order to install an anemone on the server and then install something dangerous on the other server. So I've, I've started with this decklist search. Who has made a decklist using Tukana and Atea? One person, I've taken a quick look, but... They, they don't seem to be doing the same thing that I am. So now let's let's get started. To my decks. Remember to log in. Start with Atea. And let's start with what are we actually doing? What is critical to this game plan? Well, I said it already. Tukana, I'm going to put in three because I really want to do things with Tukana. And also, Anemone seems critical. And to actually look at the cards that I'm talking about. Tukana says, when an agenda is scored or stolen from the root of the server, you may search R&D for one piece of ice and install it and res it, paying three credits less. Notably, this is an install and this will trigger Atea. So if I install that ice on one of my remote servers, Atea can install that ice on another remote server. Or Atea can install whatever I want on the other remote server. My current idea is to install a Reaper function, which says when your turn begins, you may trash this asset to do two net damage. So I would like to create a situation where they steal my agenda, they lose cards to the anemone, they have an upcoming reaper function that will also possibly do damage, and ideally we would like to kill them. Not guaranteed, I'm going to put two in the deck. Now let's also put in some staples. The suggestions are right, I think we're going to put three spin doctors in here. I think I'm going to put three hedge funds in here. I don't think there's better economy than hedge fund to be found in Jinteki. And I think we're going to put three Rashida Jahims in here. So hedge fund, we know it, we love it. Gain four credits. Rashida Jahim, also just obscenely staple card of corp deck building, because if it lives for one turn, you get three cards and three credits. I think... I'm going to assume a bit of familiarity with the standard card pool, but I can always do this a bit differently if people are interested in that. So now that I've gone all in on Tukana, we need to think about how are we winning the game? It, it can't be, we can't start with the assumption that they will run our server and die. Because if they don't run the server, then it, things just look awkward. So I think we need a scoring out plan that is actually reasonable. A reasonable way to score out, if you've almost killed them with some anemone trap of some kind, is blood in the water. So that's an easy three copies. I also note that if we are looking to score or to trigger Tukana a lot, that means one pointers. This is a very this is a very difficult way to try to build a deck because it costs a lot of deck slots and you don't actually want to score multiple of these. So we're kind of assuming that we're, the runner's going to fight us on some. So when I think what one-pointers are good for us, 
There's two that come to mind. One is false lead. We can forfeit this to make them lose two clicks and make sure they can't draw up after they hit our clown car remote of doom. I'm not sure I want to do that because it slows the game down and if they are playing carefully around false lead, then it doesn't do anything. Another option is House of Knives. This comes with three tokens that we can throw at them to do one net damage, and it makes us have one, one card more deadly in terms of... Like, we are one card deadlier in our remote death trap. I am going to put in two, but... I'm thinking about putting in four one-pointers, which is a pretty rough deck building decision because we're loading the deck up with even more agendas. And so if I will for now put in four one-point agendas. So that will be a third House of Knives because that's a good one. And I'm going to put in one of the false leads. The reason I'm putting in four is because we want to be at 20 agenda points, not 21, because we want to minimize the amount of agendas available to the runner. So do I want to put in Fuji Asset Retrieval? I don't think I do. It's a powerful card. But I think we're going to struggle to score a 5-3. I don't think we have enough. I don't think we're going to end up with enough honest ice, partially because I've made decisions like four one-pointers. And if we're putting in the asset retrieval in the deck that also has one-pointers and also has two-pointers, we're going to end up having to make a rough scoring plan of we might end up having to score a 5-3 to get the two more points we need, and that's just really difficult. I'm going to say no to Fuji Asset Retrieval for now, but it's an option that you can try, especially if you're trying to make a more dedicated all-in kill shot. For the other two pointers that exist, I think Longevity Serum is pretty justifiable. It's a 3-2 with text on it. It's no luminal transubstantiation, but I don't think we'll find better. And now we need eight more agenda points. One thing that I can already tell is going to be a problem for us is getting enough economy. So off-world office is always a strong contender. However, I'm also worried that we're going to struggle again to actually score the thing because there's not going to be advanceable traps and I don't know if I want to play NGO Front right now. I think what I do want is the ability to have a strong never advance threat. So I think I'm going to put in Project Yagiuda. We don't have to resort to any tricks like... We don't have to resort to tricks like... Meh. <laughs> All right, I'll cut this in editing, maybe. We don't have to resort to any kind of tricks to get additional advancement counters if our agendas all only require three advancements. One other thing I forgot when on the topic of one-pointers and should be considering is Jinteki got a 2-1 in the Borealis cycle. That is hybrid release. And we can install the face-down card from archives. I think that this is a good idea. I think I'm actually going to pivot down one house and knives and cut the false lead because I'm, I'm not going to put in that many one pointers. The downside of Tucana is that they can trash it for one. So it's not going to stick around and get you multiple procs if they are the ones to steal it. They're going to shut down the Tucana for one more agenda. We can put in one off world office, I guess. So 12 agendas is very high, and that, that's kind of bad. But now we can decide on ice. Actually, let's decide on economy. We've got our hedge fund. 
I think we're going to have to be playing three regoliths. Classic Jinteki economy card. It has a lot on one card, and you can just mash it for as many credits as you need. Also of note, we have the option... All right, let's take a look. Because I need to think about what economy cards do I play. So I'm going to go to the search bar. I'm going to say type asset. It's going to be X gain or take. So this is... So this X is, we're searching the text box for anything that has gain or take in the text box. I'm gonna put another X in for credits because I want it to be about gaining or taking credits, not clicks or anything. Then I'm gonna do B latest and Z latest. That's ban list latest and rotation latest. All right, that gets us not many options. I'm also gonna view this as images only. And I'm looking for something to put in a secondary remote to gain money. Ideally, it wouldn't cost a lot of influence and I could refine the search to make it not cost influence. But I think we're gonna find some slim pickings. Nano etching influence, nano etching matrix, to influence, that's too much. Public health portal. It's not very good. When we reveal the top of R&D, we have a serious problem that we tell them when there's points to be had. Daily quest, three influence, we already spent it all. Roughneck repair squad. This is basically doing the same thing regolith mining licenses. We don't want it. Refuge, also no. Bladder wart, I don't think is what we're looking for. This costs, or rather this gains one credit a turn and might occupy your remote for a very long time. And when we're making plays such as putting in a Reaper function to the remote for one turn, we'd like the remote to be unoccupied and cycling stuff. Sfiatagor Excavator, somewhat interesting because we're gonna have some anemones that have fired and are now pretty useless. We're not gonna, I don't think we're gonna play this. Beekeeper, also not great. Nico, too much influence. Regolith, we've put three in. Maryland Campaign is something that I have put into past Atea decks. And ordinarily, I would say that's a great use of our final three influence. Let's do it. The problem is that Maryland Campaign actually takes a shockingly long time to pay out, even for something that goes at two credits per turn. And this is specifically my experience in Atea decks. You need the remote to be free quicker than Maryland Campaign will get you. Balanced coverage also is permanent, not great. Cybersyn Harvester, two influence. Prana Condenser isn't exactly an, an economy card. So I think we've struck out why, why isn't NGO front in here? Okay. One other thing to remember, NGO front exists. I don't know why it didn't come up in that search. I have this search that I baked into my oven earlier. So latest, latest rotation, latest ban, asset with gain or take and the word credit in it. And here we find, oh, it's not in here either. What a weird problem to have come up live. We're not going to worry about it. This is an advanceable card. In, an, in a deck where we aren't going to show cards that we're advancing, I don't think this is fulfilling the role of being an ambiguous potential agenda. If they figure out that we're on all never advance, then this is just a slow economy card but we might need to use it. So I'm gonna go back to the deck builder, wherever I put that. I'm gonna put in two and we will come back and reevaluate this. Let's talk about ice. 
Jinteki has gotten some good ice lately. I think Tatubola is possibly the best ice because it finally gives Jinteki an in-faction gear check. And when you're done with it, it gains you money. And if it's on the remote somewhere, you can trigger Atea with it, possibly getting you that delicious, delicious install. It's possible that we might end up tripping over the trigger of having of having multiple swaps and installs on the remote when we don't want to use Atea. We'll get to we'll figure that out later. Then the other cards we had is we've gotten some options for taxing code gates. So we have Vampira Nasa. I think it's a good card, fantastic art, worth considering for that alone. And it gives us something that we're really going to need. We may draw cards when it fires on the face check. However, I'm thinking about a local meta that plays Buzzsaw, and I specifically want to hurt Buzzsaw users. So I'm going to use the Automata Initiative Special Atini, which has five strength and is much more difficult for Buzzsaw to break. I'll put in three of these. Right now we need to be careful because I've got three Tatubolas and three, sen or three Anemones. These are, this is ice that TM doesn't do anything. Very important you don't end up with a table full of cards that don't do anything once the runners got their breaker suite up. One more card that I'm going to put in, just as one, is Thimble Rig. It is a code gate gear check, and it says, it just says end the run, and you also get to swap ice around. This is more useful than it sounds because you can put the good ice in the right places. Sometimes you end up having to put some ice somewhere just because you need any ice and that you can get in some serious trouble later on when you find that you put all, your only good piece of ice on HQ, but now you need to actually tax them on the remote. But we only put in one. So we've got, we've got about 10 ice so far. We need more. Sentries is a good question. Jinteki has the iconic sentry that every faction is jealous to have, Anansi. However, a Nancy costs eight. That's a lot of money. Not sure I want to spend eight. Let's think about some options. So if we get into a search, I'm gonna to go to subtype sentry, faction Jinteki, or let's see, neutral corp I think is NC. Yeah, and we're just going to look for all of those. Oh, and we have to specify latest ban list, latest rotation. Z latest, not X. I'm going to look at these as images because we don't have a lot of them. Ideally, what the, when is this from? Oh my God, it's a Red Sands card. You always forget those are legal. We have some options. We have Anansi, very strong, very taxing, sometimes murders them. And then the options get a little worse. Saisenton does sometimes kill them. It's very expensive. Owl, not, I'm not worried about Owl. If they're... If they don't have a way to break Owl, then Anemone would be a good enough tax. Malinzi costs seven. I think it's just a worse Anansi, unless we were doing some kind of gross mill plan, which we're not. Anemone, we already have. Bathonomus. It's a fun card, but it's a gear check. And I want something that might be a little more taxing on an ongoing basis. Odoroshi, not really what I'm interested in, because that's advanceable trap support. Karuna generally thought to be not very good because it just costs a lot to not be that taxing to many of the, of the Sentry Breakers people are playing. Tithe costs one, but it's also one more on the pile of ice that doesn't do anything. 
Swordsman is AI tech, which honestly, people are playing Audrey these days. Maybe I'll consider it. And then Funutria has the interesting clause that should be very relevant to this matchup. But if they have four or more cards in hand when they pass it, they take a tag. However, I don't think we can pack tag punishment into this deck with any kind of effectiveness. Unless... No, I don't think so. So I think the sentries might actually be done and we'll look towards other ice types as wrong as it is to discount a Nancy. All right, I'll tell you what. We put in one Anansi because they should be afraid of it. We put in one Swordsman because we want to trash a Turtle or a Maudry at some point. That cuts us five sentries. Let's look into the other ice types. Actually, there's one more sentry I want to put in. This deck is going to be holding some very important cards in hand. And I actually want a better card to defend HQ that I think I'm actually going to spend influence on. I'm going to look at Afshar. That is two influence, and it has the HQ clause of they can't break more than one of its subroutines. I want this on HQ because if we've got all these important cards in HQ with trash costs and the runner's in control of the game, trashing everything from HQ will never bounce back. So I want to fetch an Afshar with, I want to fetch an Afshar with the Tukana and have a better defended HQ. There goes to influence. We've got one left. And that is five code gates. And now we're on barriers. It's a little grim on the barrier front. Jinteki is the faction that doesn't really do barriers. Ivic is cool, but it's very expensive in order to not tax as well as Anansi does. We've got four end the runs, which might be enough. Half Rune has some fun text on it, but I don't think it's quite good enough for what we want to do. We've got Tattoo Bola. And you can really see how big of a deal it was to have these, this ice, and then suddenly we get Tattoo Bola that we're actually happy to play. This is standard. People are still currently playing Cleaver as the predominant fractor that is just everywhere. And I'm, I'm not sure what I want to do. I think I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to come back here. I'm going to increase the Anansi count because they, they just need to be afraid. We need to make them afraid. And I actually want to go, I want to have a healthy amount of ice, at least 15 or 16, because when you're Atea, you, you install your ice really quickly and you end up not having a great, you end up not having a lot of ice left over for the centrals. So we actually end up wanting more. The barrier situation is dire. Is it Palisade? This feels like I'm building for Junteki startup a year or two ago. All right, I'll, I will tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put in Ivic and we're gonna pivot a little on the ice suite. I'll put in two Ivics because we'll eventually want an Ivic. And then I'm actually gonna pivot away from Anansi. And I'm gonna put in some more code gates because we were already on three Atinis and Afshar and Thimble Rig. And we have this delightful. We have this delightful little code gate that some people have actually been putting into decks. Let's put in two and see what our count is. That takes us to 17 ice if we put in two diviners. And here we are at 48 cards. 
And we have we do have some room. We have NGO front. We have. I think we're doing okay. It's a very sketchy deck list. Should have mentioned from the beginning, I don't win big tournaments because I do things like this. All right, with our one influence, we can put in an Eli 1.0. Six barriers, what's wrong with me? This is, this is so much ice. Oh, I haven't put in the virus yet or magnet. No, we're putting in one magnet, cut the Eli. I forgot that we had some tech cards we had to put in. So one magnet, awesome. We need at least one, possibly two Mavirus because viruses are very spooky and they're everywhere. Tried it too, eight code gates is a lot. So I think that allows us to cut it down to, I think that lets us cut the diviners again. There we are, we're down to 16 ice and we have a healthy amount of tech. We've got magnets and we've got Tomb of Virus, which has incidental value as an extra damage that you can put on our Doom Remote. Speaking of Doom Remote, forgot one card that I would like to try to put in. And that is, that's not Daniela. Or is it? It is Daniela. I think I want to put in one Daniela. What do we cut? Cutting one Mavirus is the kind of decision you'll regret when you want Mavirus. I think we're already at the amount of ice that I want. Can't cut agendas unless I consolidate one of these two pointers, which might be a good call. House of Knives. The better deck building decision is to cut one pointers because one pointers are really bad. But I want to trigger Tukana more. Okay, we're, we're cutting House of Knives, going up an off world office. No, that's miserable because we'll we have no good way to cheat out one advancement counter. But it's too late. That's what we've done. So here we sit at 49 cards. We've spent all the influence. And this is the deck list. Now, some people would bring this to Jinteki.net and try it out. Honestly, I'm more of an in-person player. I will bring this to this week's meetup and I will let you know what happens with this. Thanks for watching.